Hi, welcome back to another episode of What's It Like? I'm the Novice Explorer and today we're talking about when it goes wrong. It's an adventurer's worst nightmare when you're out traveling, you're out on an adventure and it goes wrong. So I've taken a load of clips from my latest adventure and basically I'm just gonna to talk to you about five instances when things have gone wrong for me. And uh, yeah, let's, let's just jump straight back into it then I guess. So, <laughs> number one. <laughs> Getting lost. Make sure you know where you're going. It's a very basic day two of my trip around the world and I get lost. I was cycling to Paris. I'd planned the route and suddenly I come across brand new paved cycle route, big sign saying London to Paris on it. And I figure I'll follow this. It's gonna take me straight to Paris. How easy is this? And I made the worst navigation mistake you can ever make. And that's to not follow the map I just disregarded it, looked at the signs and said, yep, yeah, well, I'm going this way. I didn't have any idea where I was. As you would expect, about an hour later, the path ended in the middle of nowhere. It was definitely not Paris or anywhere near Paris. Suddenly, I had to work out where I was and then find out which way Paris was. The track ended. I then got lost. That's definitely got in my head now. Today has been a waste of time. And as you can see from the footage, I was not very happy about it, especially to happen that early. It was demoralizing. It made me suddenly think, you can't do this. You've got lost on day two. It really knocks the confidence out of you. But I'm glad I learned that lesson very, very early on so that I would never make that mistake again. And in a situation like that, I mean, there's several things you need to do. Number one is not to panic. Number two is to look around you to see what tick features that you can notice on the horizon in front of you near you that will help you locate where you are on the map. If you've got a mobile phone using some kind of electronic maps, that's great to pinpoint where you are then and there. Can you see any road signs? Can you see any people? Can you stop and ask? Another really crippling thing to happen to you, whether you're traveling or on an adventure, is getting ill. When you're at home, you can stay in bed, you can get soup, you can watch crap television, read a book. When you're out on the road, <laughs> It's not always that simple. And I've had several bouts of illness while I've been on my adventure. <coughs> Morning, I've woken up sweating like crazy. For the last 32 hours, I've been stuck in this hotel room. I had a stomach illness. I feel so ill, ill all day, all night last night. I'm absolutely shattered. Every three meters, it bounces your stomach, just churning my stomach like a washing machine. I've had two days here because I've been <laughs> sick, taking antibiotic. I haven't left my bed for a day and a half, didn't eat for a day and a half. Been ill for the last three, four days. Probably one of the worst ones was being in the middle of the Pamir Mountains and getting a stomach illness. You lose a ton of fluid straight away. It's very hot in the Pamirs anyway. There's not a lot of shops, not a lot of places that you'd be comfortable while you're ill. I was lucky to crawl to a um, small town, if you can even call it that, called Murgab. Spent a few days there trying to recuperate. It's not a great experience, but the, the most important thing is not to jump back on the adventure too soon. You lose a lot of fluid, you're gonna you know, make yourself ill again and it's not great. You need to be 110% before you start again. So you need to take, you know, some time to do that and that is the hardest thing to do. You just wanna get back on with it and go. <laughs> Pushing too hard. I'm sure there's a few of you out there who have this drive like I do. I struggled on my adventure not to go over the top. I'm a very motivated person when I have a goal or an aim in mind. And so I like to cover distance. I like to get from A to B if I plan to do that. And I entered the WACAN. It was meant to be quite difficult to go through, remote, like barren area. You're not going to see many people when you're going through. I'd been told it would take me four days. I went through it in about one and a half days. I got to a whole other village in two days. It was ridiculous. But that's because I pushed myself too hard and I, I went crazy. I, I definitely pushed myself to my physical limit and beyond like I'd never done before. This f***ing road, it's just sand. You can't cycle on sand. Come on. Yes. I cycle for maybe 10 seconds and then my legs are crying in pain. I stop maybe a minute or so and then I feel like I've got all the energy in the world. I'm out of breath and my legs are crying in pain. I haven't got anything left. It's an absolute battle. I'm sure it's the altitude. It's a physical barrier. Physical barriers are meant to be broken. I'm grateful I did because I found where my physical boundary was. I'd never experienced that before, where you actually reach a point where you go, wow, this is my physical boundary. This is the furthest point I've ever been. And you push over that. But you've got to be careful when you do that. You've got to you know, listen to your body when you feel that you're at your physical limit and not go too crazy. 
like I did. It can be productive to, to really push yourself, but you've got to think about your own safety where you are, you know, and what could go wrong if you if you do push yourself too hard. You know, it taught me two things. It taught me where my limit was and how I could push over it, and it taught me how careful you have to be about reaching that limit and you know how far you do take it from that point onwards. It's always good to improve, but in a sensible way, I guess. As if you'd have any problems with the equipment that you would take on an adventure, right? I mean, <laughs> it's still stuck in the actual mount. This spoke I lost in Vienna. This spoke broke today. The wheel is actually broke here. The inner tube that we just put in has just deflated. This is the fifth time the screw has come off of the Ortlib bag. It's a slow puncher, but it's definitely going down. The train was skipping here. And this is all wonky because the screws have come out. That mechanic fabricated five of these bolts just there. There is a tiny bit of metal there where my thumb is getting a new wheel built. It was a learning curve, it was interesting. It taught me a lot about bike maintenance as I went on. A lot of them weren't my fault, I just want to add that. I had six punches in one day. Well, obviously I'm doing something wrong, but I had someone else look at the punches as well and they were you know, getting the same results that I was. So you've just got to kind of be as practical as possible. When you take you know, an inner tube out that's punctured, you need to repair it because you might need that inner tube later on in that day, like I did, and it's good to have it repaired ready to use. <laughs> Maintaining your kit is the most important thing because maintaining your kit, you'll spot your problems early on, hopefully, and you can do something about them. And also, it will take you a long way as long as you care for it. If you've been following my vlogs and following the adventure, you'll know what this is going to be. This is like the ultimate nightmare for anybody traveling, and that's having an accident in a foreign country or you know somewhere that you're not familiar with. It's the worst thing that can happen for, for several reasons. It's scary when you're physically injured or physically hurt. It's not nice, it's, you, you become vulnerable because you're in this alien place or you're in a place where you don't speak the language or in, you're in a place very far from home so you don't have those comforts. It's very hard to communicate to someone what your injury is when you don't speak the language and it, it gets very scary that you don't really understand what's happening and what you do next. And It's also quite worrying when you're in that experience on your own. I'd reached China and I entered Western China, the autonomous region of uh, Xinjiang, uh, I think that's how you say it, and an area where they don't really want foreigners to be. It's not very nice what's going on in that region. And um, I'm cycling down a valley towards a town called Turpan, so the road turns into gravel. It's not an unusual thing for me, and it wasn't particularly a bad road service. It starts to take a little bit more of a drop in the hill, and suddenly there must have been a huge hole that they'd filled with gravel and not compressed it properly because suddenly the bike just was swallowed up. It just sunk in front of me straight away. And I went flying off the bike. I knew as soon as my knee hit the ground, there was something wrong. And I crawled to the side of the road and blood's everywhere. And I'm just thinking, you know, I've got to get the first aid kit out. I've got to stop the bleeding. I'm looking at the cup. I don't really want to look at the cup. I managed to get over to the side of the road to this, this, this kind of bricked area. Right there, that's where I fell off the bike on my arm, my hands and my knee pretty badly. Deep cut my knee. I just washed it and cleaned it. My knee feels like it's going dead. I don't move it when I move it. It's very painful. I feel very, very sick at the moment. Sugar should be good. And that's like a little bit of the shock settling in after the adrenaline. It's really starting to hurt. I'm bandaging myself up. I'm trying to, you know, focus on what my priorities are, check my body, get the dirt out and basically make sure I'm okay. I'm proud of the way I dealt with that um, because that's like a really important thing to make you know to know that in that situation I can do the basics, which was which was great. I was able to to sleep in like a bricked barn kind of thing, and in the morning I paid one of the, the workmen to drive me to the nearest hospital. I had X-rays, had MRIs, I had a cast put on. Then the police got involved, and you know almost unofficially arrested me. They wouldn't let me go anywhere. I was stuck in the back of their car ahead of time before I'd left. I had consulate contact information in a book I carried with me for all of the places I was going. You know, I had a copy of my insurance policy with me in case I needed to pay out and definitely planning ahead helps. So I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, make sure you give a like to the video below and, you know, tell me what you enjoyed about it. Tell me what you didn't enjoy about it. Uh, tell me what you want to see in the future in these videos because I want to make them as interesting as possible and share all the experiences and the very limited knowledge that I have with you guys and make them really entertaining. Make sure you hit the subscribe button as well if you're watching this on YouTube. You don't want to miss any more of these videos and also the vlogs that are coming out for a huge chunk of the journey that you haven't even seen yet.
yet. Some of these clips were even from that next part. So make sure you hit the subscribe so you don't miss a thing. And I will see you next time. See you later.